Hello everyone. Today we're going to be interviewing Nick Panayi. He's been with CSC for about four years and he's based out of the Falls Church headquarters office in Virginia. He's responsible for the global brand of CSC as well as digital marketing. A few of his efforts uh, include the rebuilding of CSC.com and building a substantial social media presence uh, throughout CSC's rebranding re process. And we'll go ahead and get right into the interview. Sure. So the first question, how long have you been with CSC and where did you get your start? So I've been with CSC four years, um, just over four years. And uh, in terms of where I got my start, in terms of my career, I, you know, I, I started in online services uh, a lot more years ago than I cared to admit right now. <laughs> uh, and I've been in really in marketing and planning and strategy roles for the last uh, 20 something years. And what is it? What was it like to have started your own company? Actually, that was a lot of fun. Most of my career has been in large enterprises, big businesses, um, and I enjoy that immensely. And that's how I found myself back in a big business. But yeah, a short period of time, you know, I always wondered, you know, uh, what it would be like to run my own uh, business. So I did some marketing consulting. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I have to say, it's, it's got its pluses and its minuses. You know, you do everything and, and you have to kind of think smaller scale, obviously, because you have to do everything. Uh, it's great to be interfacing with a customer day to day, uh, and it's great to be able to really bring vision to practice. Um, and uh, from that perspective, that was a lot of fun. And again, bringing everything I've learned in marketing into focus for a small, medium-sized business is, um, it was fun. It was fun and engaging, but I came back to my roots. You know, I'm, I'm more comfortable. I'm more at ease in a in a large enterprise with uh, good sized teams that can have impact uh, at scale. Yeah, so that's what I really enjoy at CSC. And we were told that you drink eight plus cups of coffee <laughs> per day. And Guilty. when did that coffee addiction start? The coffee addiction. <laughs> um, I, I have to say, you know, so I was born and raised in Cyprus, uh, which is a small island in the Mediterranean. And we drink a lot of coffee in Cyprus. And we start young. And we drink uh, what we call Greek coffee, what other people call Turkish coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, so you drink that coffee, that will, uh, that will develop an addiction in no time, right? So, uh, and I started drinking that, I don't know, like 13, 14 or something like that. So I think that was my uh, the initiation into coffee. And I've been there ever since. Now I have my own Keurig. Yeah. You know, we, we, heard. we heard uh, that you have a Keurig at your desk. Yeah, but so that's actually contraband, right? So you can't share it other than the people that will see this video. Uh, but I had to take matters into my own hands. The coffee was not uh, up to my part. liking. It was not up to par. So I had to take matters into my own hands, get my own Keurig. <laughs> Um, we also hear that office soccer is a big deal in your area of the office. How did this begin? That began uh, when I decided that we needed uh, something to kind of uh, channel our energy, you know, during the day. And mm -hmm. uh, we looked at Amazon and found a little bit of a small size soccer uh, goal. I got a couple of them in case we can actually have a whole game. We haven't done that yet. But I found out that some other people in the area enjoy soccer as well. So we have afternoon soccer shootouts. And we actually keep score. And not that I want to brag, but I'm leading there. Oh, we heard you're competitive also with the soccer. Just so, <laughs> yeah, are you keeping score? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, we also heard that you send cute, cutes, quick questions. Yes. Um, what does this mean? And why does it scare your team when they see them? <laughs> I shouldn't scare them, uh, but a, a QQ is, uh, you know, first of all, I, I start my day always with a, a look at our dashboard. So we have a pretty extensive dashboard that tracks all of our KPIs in marketing. And that's how, you know, in between coffee one and two, that's what I do. I look at the dashboard. Inevitably, when you look at 10 different tabs and probably 30, 40 different charts of, well, the, in essence, the key dials of the marketing team, Inevitably, there's a question, you know, so is there a spike that I want to know about, or there's a drop that I want to know about, or something doesn't look quite right. 
Uh, so that usually uh, is the beginning of a QQ. Uh, so I basically send a quick question out to their team member and frankly the entire team because I want them to be aware as well. And I say, what, what's behind this spike or what's behind this trend? And it doesn't make them nervous. I think they're overplaying that. But you know, they, you know, if you're a recipient of a QQ, that means that if you don't know the answer, that means you haven't been on the dashboard before I did. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation to them is to get on the dashboard before I do in the morning because that way when they get a QQ, they can answer it without any fears. Yes, true. Um, it is known around the office that you often tell your team everything is perfectly doable. Give us an example of a hard project that you had to inspire those around you with those exact words, perfectly doable. Yeah, perfectly doable actually was born uh, about three and a half years ago when we had to launch the website. Uh, and frankly, the, the website at that point uh, looked uh, like it was from the 1980s. It was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had a pretty large uh, uh, project in front of us and with a very short runway. Uh, literally, we had two and a half months to redo the entire website, uh, redesign it, the whole user experience, the design, everything. 30,000 pages. Actually, I'm sorry, it was 24,000 pages at the time. So we had to slim it down to 50,000 pages, redesign it all in two and a half months, all while we were doing uh, marketing automation and analytics platforms as well. So at that point, is it's what I call a target-rich environment, right? We had a lot of challenges. So when I made that challenge to the agency and the team that was working with us on this, they took the challenge and then they started moving forward. And then I upped the ante a little bit because there was a new technology that I wanted to implement uh, called... Um, um, what is the technology called? Uh, responsive design, sorry. So responsive design allows you to really view the website uh, on any size glass, meaning you know, on a, on a small phone or a mm -hmm. large monitor, and you don't have to report it. It really adjusts very nicely to, that, um, to the form factor you're using. And that was a major change to the plans. Uh, they almost fell out of their chairs, but I said, don't worry, it's perfectly doable. And... Uh, they all laughed, uh, they knew that they had to do it, they delivered, and that perfectly doable saying became something that we always use whenever there's something that's almost impossible to do, but we want to keep calm and collect it and go deliver it, and everybody says, hey, it's perfectly doable. Yeah, the site looks awesome. Yeah, good. And you helped to lead the revamping of the CC's website in mm -hmm. only three months, which broke industry records. So you just told the story, but how exactly did you motivate your team when you felt like they felt like it was impossible? Mm -hmm. uh, look, my team doesn't need special motivation. I hire people who are self-motivated. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of part of the makeup of the team. They thrive uh, with the challenges that they have, and it's a fun space. Digital marketing is a, it's a very fast-moving uh, space. And um, really, I have to do very little motivating. I just hire well. You know, I just yeah. hire smart people uh, who know what they're doing, uh, who are motivated themselves. Um, and I just come in once in a while, I, I set direction and I give goals. And if they need to overcome an obstacle, I may help uh, overcome an obstacle. But at the end of the day, they're self-motivated. Uh, they do all the work. Um, I just take the credit. <laughs> we noticed that you tweet and retweet a lot of photos and articles about Greece. Have you visited recently and have you taken your children? I, you know, I was born and raised in Cyprus. I, I, I have visited Greece many, many times. I have not taken the kids yet uh, to Greece. Although uh, we are very close to perhaps going to Greece this year. I'm not, not quite sure. The situation in Greece is a, is a bit challenging right now. But yeah, I, I love Greece and I, uh, I just love everything else. Everything about it, uh, you know, the Greek islands and everything else. And it's just highly recommended. It's one of those places in the world that... Obviously, I'm a little tainted, uh, but it's kind of hard to describe. It's one yeah. of those places you got to go. And so speaking of your children, you're very much in the know about social media, huh? but what have they taught you? Do you often find yourself learning through their use of social media? Oh, big time. I, I test a lot of the ideas uh, by my kids. Um, I have an 18-year-old on his way to college. I have a 13-year-old. Uh, they both use very different things, but I learned uh, so much from them in 
primarily that they don't care about any of the stuff that I care about. Uh, and they tell me about what's coming next. Uh, you know, we always talk about, I, I really drill them on how do you communicate, why do you use this tool versus another tool, why don't you ever answer my emails, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing, right? And uh, they taught me about Snapchat and they still refuse to give me access to their Snapchat account, which is, I guess, pretty standard practice for, for teenagers. But, um, but I learned a lot about what, what, what they, the, tr the thumb tribe, the you know, people that have grown up digital, uh, what they think about, how they think about it. It does give me a nice um, kind of bouncing off mechanism uh, for all kinds of things. Plus they're blessed, they're, they're great kids. So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's all the questions we had. Okay. Yeah, thank Very you good. so much. Thank you. Thank you.